Hey guys, what's up? After the absolute success that was the launch of Dead End, my Python raycasting game... Wait, that's not it. What the hell? In today's video I decided to talk about mods. Mods are changes made in games, sometimes they are made to fix bugs, add new content, or even practically transform one game into a totally different one. Many successful games actually start life as mods from other games. For example, Counter-Strike started as a mod from Half-Life. Dota was a mod of the game World of Warcraft wow. that also ended up generating League of Legends. LOL. There are numerous other examples of successful mods which I don't have time to mention here. So what I'm going to do here is show how easy it is to modify my own game, that end. So you can also create your own version. One of the simplest things you can do is replace assets. As I showed in the last video, to edit a campaign map, just open the file in your favorite image editor, remembering to use black color for the ground and have walls all around the map, which must be always a square. In the same way, you can edit the textures used in the walls, floor and sky, taking care to keep the same format and resolution for the file, as well as for the sprites. They must have the same size with the same amount of frames for rotations and animations. This is also true for the sounds, where you have to keep the same names and file formats. This will be the easiest kind of mod, since it's only cosmetic. It doesn't change the game code at all. In fact, you can use the same executable file that was published in each I.O. Now, if you want to do something a little more custom, it is interesting to make adjustments to the game code so that it meets your goals. Of course, it helps a lot if you have watched all the tutorials and devlogs of the game development, but it is not strictly necessary, go watch it later if you need. To show you that it's not something from another world, I will show here how to transform that end into a first person shooter, in a style similar to the Left 4 Dead series. I know, very original. Well, one of the first things I did was create sprites for the weapon. For that I traced an image I found and tried to leave it more or less in the same style of the dead end sword sprite. I tried to do a little animation with fire and smoke. I can simply replace the sword sprite file or save it as a new file. I just need to remember to replace the name in the sprite loading function. The second thing is the weapon sound. Now that sword swoosh sound doesn't make sense anymore. So I got a shooting effect and made a variation to replace the sword sounds, again changing the file name when loading the sounds. And check this, we can already test the game with a new face on. When you shoot it looks and sounds like a gun, but functionally it's still a sword and only does an area damage on enemies that are very close to the player. What you need is that the shot only hits the enemy that's in the crosshairs and since it is a gun, it has to cause damage from a longer distance. So the first thing I will do is remove the distance filter, which is no longer necessary. In its place I will calculate a 3 dimensional ray, to see if the player hit the enemy. The same way it was done for the sword, I will check all the enemies that are visible. As I already have the inverse of the distance to each enemy calculated when I order the sprites, I can reuse it. For the x and y coordinates I just need to multiply the distance by the cosine and the sine of the angle the player is facing. I just need to apply an offset here because I also used one when rendering the frame, to let the camera a bit behind of the player. I added a bit of noise in the player's rotation to have a little more randomness in the hits, making it harder to hit distant enemies. I could use just this and consider that the shots always follow a horizontal straight line. But then, the player can kill monsters even without looking at them, so I decided to also consider the vertical rotation. So I need to calculate the ray vertical position. For that I have the variable rot v that goes from minus 1 to 1. By my calculations, the vertical vision field is 45 degrees, so the player can look up and down 22.5 degrees. I just need to transform it into radians. This mess could have been avoided if I had used the radians directly as the vertical rotation. Anyway, let's go on. If we multiply the distance by the sine of the angle, we will have a vertical displacement value. Now we can see if the player hit the enemy or not. First, with the x and y coordinates, I will check if the distance to the enemy is less than 0.1. And with the z coordinate, I will check if it is greater than 0, 
above the ground and if it is less than a value proportional to the enemy size, so bigger enemies are easier to hit. Now we can decrease the enemy's health value. If the value of Z is close to the maximum height, I will decrease a higher value, considering that it was a headshot. To prevent a bullet from passing through several enemies in a row, I added a damage modifier, which halves the damage after the first impact and then stops the loop. Now we have a game with a weapon that behaves like a gun. Only enemies that are in the crosshairs take damage. If I aim at the ground or the sky, the shot doesn't reach the enemy. But something still seems to be missing. When you hit an enemy, there is not much feedback. It simply disappears after a couple of shots. In that end, while using a sword, this is not a problem, because you can see the sword hitting the enemies. So I decided to add a new effect, a blood splatter for each shot that hits an enemy. For this I created this semi-transparent PNG image, and this splatter will also be animated. But instead of using several frames, I will just increase the splatter size with passing time. But before anything else, I have to load the image and I will create an array to keep its original size. So here, before starting a match, I have to initialize a parameter that will take care of the splatter scale, with a value equal to 1. And after rendering the frame with the walls and sprites, I will check if the weapon was activated and if the damage modifier is less than 1. That is, if it hit any enemy. First, I will update the scale, which grows as time goes by. I multiply by 1 plus the variable that controls how much time passed between frames. Then I make a scale copy of the blood splatter with the transform scale function, where I enter the original texture and the new size, which is calculated with the scale and with the original size of the sprite, plus an adjustment factor that depends on the rendering resolution. And then finally I can pass the scale texture to the frame. To simplify I'll put it always in the middle of the frame. After all that's where the crosshair is always pointing. But one thing is still missing. This way the effect will always have the same size, both for closer and more distant enemies. What I need is to update the scale value at the moment an enemy is hit. With the enemy's own scale value, which was calculated there in the sprite ordering function. After that, what's left is to rebalance the game, so it doesn't get too easy and dull. Some of the things I ended up doing here were decrease the damage that the player delivers to the enemies and increase the speed of the attacks, so that the weapon sounds a bit more normal. Increase the movement speed of the enemies, since now I can hit them from anywhere, they need to be more agile. I could still increase the enemy's life, increase the quantity, among other things. In the end, this fine tuning ends up being one of the most time consuming parts, because I need to test all levels of the game to see if it is cool. And look at that, I think the game is even a little more fun than the original. It seems that shooting zombies and skeletons is way more satisfying than hitting them with a sword. And as you have seen, it is a bit easier to make a mod of a game than a whole game. So I'd like to encourage you to create your own version. I think that may be the best way for those that are starting out on game dev. That's why a lot of people use game engines. In a way, you already have the game base already there. You just need to worry about the content. An idea I have is to turn this project into a kind of game engine too. But for that I need to revise the code to make it more well structured and readable. But this video will stop here. Any questions just leave a comment. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Anyway, thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.